Hey, Joe here from Home Studio Corner. It's beautiful outside, but let's go inside. You wanna check out my studio? Come on, let's go. So my studio is in a walkout basement of my home, and we're gonna go through the door. Sorry if that makes you dizzy right now. So here it is. I think that I could have saved it if only I had enough time. Just a few simple words would have thrown it all back in line. several studio tours in the past. The problem is my wife and I have this nasty habit of moving every few years, which means I've had to set up my home studio in several different homes, several different configurations, several different sizes of room. So I've had a lot of experience doing it. This one is by far the biggest room that I've had available to me, but I've been in everything from a log cabin, spare bedroom, apartment room, um, weird U-shaped room, smaller, skinnier, longer rooms with another separate room. But this is where I am currently and probably where I'm gonna stay for a long time. So the room itself is great. It's just a big open space. Got a couple of columns to navigate around, but otherwise it's a really big space. You can see there's like room to sit over there just for hanging out with folks when they come to the studio, songwriting, things like that. But we can also clear all that out and set up drums, bass. We could do a full tracking day with several musicians all in one room, old school style, fairly easily. While I would like to have a separate room for guitar amps or maybe a vocal booth type thing, which we can maybe get to down the road with some other square footage over that way, one big room is kind of, if I had to pick, either a big room or a small control room with individual recording rooms, I'd pick a big room just because it feels better and a lot of times just having a bunch of musicians in the room making music, even though it's a little more annoying to have to put headphones on and off the whole time because you're all in there together, there's just something special about that that I like. Okay, so let's talk about some of the toys. As is probably painfully obvious, I've got a good relationship with the folks at PreSonus. They've done a lot of, we've done a lot of work together. Uh, they're sort of a sort of a sponsor of Home Studio Corner in a lot of ways. Uh, we got a lot of fun things planned for the future. But a lot of the equipment that I have is PreSonus. This top one here, the silver one is the Eureka. It's a solid stage. The, actually, they don't make any of these preamps anymore. So it's not even a sales pitch for them. They don't make them. This is the Eureka. This is the ADL 700. It's a one channel channel strip with a tube preamp, EQ, and compressor. And this is the ADL 600, which is two channels of that tube preamp minus the compressor and EQ. Incidentally, this one died on me this week and I gotta figure out how to get it fixed. And then I don't know if you can see this. This is just a very simple ART P16 patch bay. My buddy Graham Cochran has one. Love the idea. Instead of having to crawl behind the desk every time I want to plug a microphone in, I can just plug them in here and run the cable around to the back of my mixer. Speaking of, let me show you my mixer, which is also my interface. So this blue beauty here is the PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 24 channel mixer. I've got a whole series of videos on it. You can check that out on my channel if you want to dive in more. But it's essentially a mixer, it's a digital mixer. It's also my audio interface. I connect FireWire into my computer and this acts as my input output device as well as being a standalone mixer that I use for tracking as well as being a control surface with the new DAW mode that they're coming out with. Okay, turning our attention to the right side of the desk, I've got preamps over to the left and this is more other stuff. So this is the PreSonus Central Station, which allows me to switch between speakers, adjust volume, select different inputs, headphone output, and oh, the camera's falling. The camera is falling. Oh, saved it. Okay, I'll just hold it. Central Station lets me switch monitors, headphone outputs, input selection, all that. This is the Avid 11 rack, which is great for lots of different guitar amp tones. I don't use it as much lately, but that might change moving forward with some ideas that I have. Down here, I use the Apple trackpad uh, instead of a mouse or one of those stupid ball wheel things that I just do not like. I really like the trackpad actually. And this is the old PreSonus fader port, which I use for transport control. You can see it's all dirty and disgusting. And then for single fader control of individual faders uh, in my mix. If you want a control service but don't want to go nuts, it's a great option. And then here, these are my favorite headphones. These are Sennheiser HD650 headphones. They're a little expensive and they're open back headphones, so you can't really use them for recording. But for mixing and mastering, they're great. They're super accurate. 
and while they are fairly expensive, whoa, that's too close. While those headphones are fairly expensive, they're not expensive if you compare them to nice studio monitors, which is kind of the sound quality you're getting out of those. Now we're on the floor. You may have seen over here behind me, I've got a little weird shelf thing that I use for a couple of purposes. And this is where it's something I've been doing that I, it's, it's more recent. I haven't done it for as long, but I like this approach. So the first thing is just a HP4 PreSonus headphone amp. Just if I have extra musicians, I run a separate headphone mix to this. It's got four headphone outputs, great for giving everybody headphone cue mixes, because remember, we're mostly all in the same room, so everybody needs headphones if someone's in the room recording. Then over there, I don't know how well you can see it, this is an older PreSonus audio box interface. USB, four input, four output. But what I'm using it for specifically is the output device for that laptop. So the laptop is plugged into here, USB. So that is now the output for main stage. Main stage is just a very simple, it's kind of like if you took Logic's instruments and turned it into just a piece of software for performance, that's what it is. And then you can load plugins into it, add more sounds and all that. So this keyboard here, this is just an old Yamaha motif, uh, 88 weighted keys. I've got that MIDI cable out of that into this interface. And then the MIDI from this keyboard is controlling main stage. Then the output of main stage, so right now it's set to, I think a Yamaha grand piano. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? And that output is coming out of the audio box line output into my mixer. So when I'm recording MIDI stuff, keyboard stuff, synth stuff, uh, B3, things like that, I'm actually recording audio from this little rig straight into there. Is it overkill? Yes. But I like the sound of that and I like the idea of dialing in a sound. Even times I've used like a, a some sort of tremolo that is set to the tempo of the song, but I will still dial it in here like I'm a guitar player dialing in pedals and I'll record all that as audio in here. So I can't go back and change it later. I have to get it right at the source, which of course is the thing I say all the time. Okay, time to stand up. Let's talk speakers for a minute. These are the old M-Audio EX66 monitors. They're big, they're bulky, and I won them in a Christmas song contest when I worked at Sweetwater years ago and they still work, so I just keep using them. One thing people always say, aren't you supposed to angle your monitors in? Yes, technically you are, but apparently these were designed to face forward and have a wider dispersion, so you don't aren't supposed to angle them in, just so you know. This is Rolando. He has a twin brother, Rolando, over there. These are just crap speakers. I actually bought those as some of my first studio monitors back when I had no money, and now I use them as my crap speakers. So I check mixes on them to hear what my mix will sound like on crappy, smaller speakers. Very important. Don't use them as much as I should, probably. Now we move on to the mic locker. It's just, it's just a closet. Shure SM7B, one of my favorite mics. Currently not working super well. Gotta get it fixed. A pair of CAD M179s. These are my go-to Tom mics, but they also kind of sound good on a lot of stuff. Really dark, adjustable polar pattern, way under $200. Yeah, they're good. Roswell Pro Audio Mini K47. It's like $299, I think. My go-to vocal mic, starting to become my go-to kind of everything mic, really great. A couple more dynamics, cause y y why not? Pop filter. What else? Got a pair of Cascade Fathead ribbon microphones. These are not the one with the fancy transformers, just the regular old Fathead. I love this mic for guitar amps and percussion, and then kind of just overall drum miking, like just away from the kit, just picking up the overall vibe. I got two because I thought I would use them for drum overheads and try them, but I never have. I really only end up using one at a time. And the reason I don't use these for drum overheads is because of these. These are my Earthworks SR25 small diaphragm condenser mics. These actually came in a three pack called the uh, drum mic kit from Earthworks. I got a sweet deal on them. It came in a box with three of them and their little kick pad deal. Um, I only needed two, so I bought the pack for a super, super big discount, then sold one of them for a guitar, I traded a guy for a guitar, which left me with two. And these are my go-to stereo mics, acoustic guitar, cello, stringed instruments, uh, and then drum overheads. These are just 
cool and great. I don't like small diaphragms for everything, but run these through a stereo tube preamp, which mine is dead right now. It doesn't get much better than that. This is a printer. So that's pretty much it for microphones. I got a bunch of cables, headphones, headphone extension cables. Cable-wise, mostly what I use are Proco, the house brand at Sweetwater. There might be a few monster cables in there, but Proco is great for me. As far as guitar amps go, this is really my go-to lately. This is a Fender Deluxe Reverb. It's one of those silver face reissues that they do. Great sounding, pretty clean amp that I run pedals into. I also have that Ampeg Reverber Rocket. It's just gnarly, and I think a tube's going out, so I don't use it that much. And then over there, I've got one of those super cute Vox AC4 amps. It's cool, I just, I like the look of it more than the sound of it. <laughs> and finally, guitars. An old, cheap, Ibanez, Artcore, semi-hollow body with only five strings on it. Telecaster-style guitar from Bootlegger Guitars. Uh, this is actually the guitar I traded one of those Earthworks mics for. What's up, Jonathan Roy? Gibson Les Paul Studio in Pelham Blue. I just love the color. Gibson ES-335, probably my favorite electric ever. And of course, the Gibson J-45, my spirit guitar. That's that All right, that's it for the studio tour. One thing I have to say, we love looking at toys and gear and getting into all that stuff, but let's not forget why we like things like guitars and microphones and preamps and mixers and speakers, because they help us make music. If you find yourself collecting gear but not making music, I don't know why I did that, then you're probably missing the point somewhere along the way. So maybe take a break, step back and just use what you have and go make some music, release something. And then when you do, maybe you can reward yourself with a new piece of gear. But until then, go make some music. Oh, and one other thing. You may have noticed the bulk of what I showed you has to do with capturing the audio. Guitars, keyboards, microphones, preamps. I didn't show you all the plug-in bundles that I own because I don't own all the plug-in bundles. I focus the majority of my time and obviously my money on capturing good stuff on the front end and then I use basic stock tools most of the time for the back-end mixing side of things. Now that's different depending on what style of music you do, but we can all stand to do a better job of capturing the sound better on the front end so we're not spending as much time fighting the sound on the back end. To that end, if you want to get better at recording and capturing raw audio that sounds already mixed so that mixing becomes a breeze, you need to check out my recording cheat sheet over at recordingcheatsheet.com. It's free. You can have it. It'll help you make better recordings by the weekend. Okay, now I'm done. Thanks. I know I can hear you. I know you can hear me. All of this noise and no one is listening. Keep talking like